and I'm Becky Parker. I'm Head of Physics here at Bennington School. Uh, I have been a teacher on and off all my life. Uh, for the last four years I helped set up the Institute for Research in Schools, which is a small charity which is promoting young people really contributing to cutting-edge science from right across the sciences. In the last 10 years in government, there has been such a focus on knowledge to the detriment of enjoying the subject and completely unnecessary in this world of knowledge at your fingertips. At GCSE, students have to remember formula for physics and this panics them because physics shouldn't be about remembering formula, it should be about understanding how the universe works and how physics is crucial for the future of the planet. You know, that's what physics should be about because that's what physics is about. So a project we were just doing this lunchtime, the James Webb Space Telescope project set up by Laura Thomas with IRIS, is a project which allows young people to look at huge sets of data with the idea that they will then be able to suggest potential new um, uh, objects to look at when the James Webb Space Telescope launches. We had just visited CERN, we had seen this amazing technology and the student said, why don't you put that in space? And I said, well, you know, I'm sure that's been done. But it turns out that, I mean, it hadn't yet been done and we had teams of students and we launched our payload on Tech Demosat 1. That was up in space for five years. Just recently, students involved much later on uh, uh, after all the initial students had all gone off to university, they published a paper on the results, they contributed genuine new data to NASA. You know, students can make a huge difference, especially in this period of vast sets of data which haven't got enough people to investigate. My name is Farah Bakare. I'm from Nigeria, but I study in the UK and I am researching African gene and the structure of African genome. 2% of research in the world is targeted towards African research, yet African DNA is composite of the most genetic structure. I have collaborated with a company called 54 Gene and we are working towards researching more about the African gene and doing more testing and molecular diagnostics. Most of like most of your time up to A-levels you only really learn about like the basic structure of things but doing this research has really helped me understand what's actually inside you and like what we're actually made of, especially because I school here and I don't go to school in Nigeria. So doing African research is also quite a nice way to connect with my roots back home and to keep in touch and make sure I'm giving back. Doing extra research makes them realise the applications of what they study at school. If students are more interested in how their physics they learn is applied in real physics research. So it does more than just excite them and engage them in physics. It actually gives them a different sense of confidence. So tonight's event is called the um, STEM Research Soiree. And what's going to happen is many of the research scientists who've helped students here doing cutting edge research are coming to um, talk to the students and mentor them in a speed mentoring session. And then the students themselves are going to present their research, how they have inspired them. We don't ask questions for fear of asking something silly that we might be laughed at. We become afraid of failure. Yet many scientific failures have led to life-changing discoveries. We are the future and we are the ones that are going to change things and if anything's going to happen, we're going to have to do it because obviously it's a different generation. So like I said before, when I started STEM, I only really wanted to do it for my CV and I didn't, I didn't have much aspiration about it. Like, 
I very much saw AI to do it now. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in the future, but going into STEM and like just hearing from these people's speech, hearing from different academics, hearing from Sue has really inspired me to actually pursue STEM as a genuine job. And it definitely doesn't feel like I'm at the same level of them or like or anywhere close, but it's so good to be able to speak at the same level at the same time as them. It's really inspiring. Because we actually want to show that this is the way to do science. You wouldn't do music if you never played an instrument or actually did any music. The same for art or history of art, perhaps. You wouldn't actually teach a subject without letting them be part of that community, doing the stuff yourself. And you can see what an impact and what fantastic things these young people will do to change the world and make it a better place. So that's our first... We are entering a world where it's more and more and more crucial that people understand the role of science and technology. If you don't change science education, we have no reason to believe that science will become more popular to create the scientists and the technicians and the scientifically literate workforce that we need for the future. It's not straightforward to arrange, it's not a quick fix. And I'm not saying that these students are going to be experts, you know, and able to sort out all the world's problems, but the skills they will have in doing something proper will be far more valuable. Why don't we give more sort of chance, more empowerment for young people to actually think of innovative new approaches which none of us have thought of, which will actually transform the world and make it a better place and actually tackle this and give them that chance. They don't have to wait till they're 40. They need to get on and do some really innovative stuff now.